Anyway, okay, it's time for the second class of Farmer's Wife, and today we're actually going to be doing five blocks. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you got those all cut. Yeah. Um, and I want you just to go through your packet of what you got today. Keep it in the order, because that's the order I'm going to be teaching it in. But then it, towards the back, I want you to notice that there is a sheet that tells you all the blocks and what session that they're going to be covered in. That way, if you miss a session and you need to get your patterns, you're going to know what you're asking for. Or if you happen to lose one, like, wait a minute, I don't have tear and dash. Okay? So you can go ahead and put that in your notebook. And we're going to start out doing a block called Attic Windows. And Attic Windows, I typically know it by a different name. It's more like a 3D kind of window quilt that usually has a picture fabric. Well, they're calling this one Attic Windows, and so we're just going to go with that. And basically, we're going to start out with a fussy cut in the middle. And I'm looking to see where it is up there, but I don't see it offhand. So you want to go through your fabric and find a good fabric that you get a two and a half inch fussy cut. Okay? And what I mean by fussy cut is mean you find like a single sort of image on your fabric that you want to center and cut around it. Okay? So we have a great little ruler here. And it's actually a two and a half inch fussy cut ruler. It comes with the mini geese ruler set, so which I'm sure you guys all have. If you don't have, you need today. <laughs> okay, so there is an X. Let's see if I can get like a, a white piece of paper. Can you see the X right in the middle? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to center that right in the middle of my fabric. I have a nice little dot right there. So. That's all there is to it. I recommend putting some Invisigrip on your ruler so it won't slip as you're cutting it around. So you just want to apply some pressure and make sure you have a nice sharp blade. Okay, so there's half of it. And if you had like a rotating mount, that would be really good to use as well. And then we're just going to turn it and do the final two. Okay, so there's my nice little fussy cut. And then you want to get rid of those scraps. You can throw them over your shoulder if you want. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our next square, and I'm just going to cut it on one diagonal. So I'm just going to use a straight edge ruler. And it doesn't matter if you cut it this way or you cut it that way. Just make sure you just do it once so you have two triangles. And when you look at it, I'm going to place it so it goes like this. Okay, can you see how I have a straight edge here and a straight edge there? And that's how I want to do it. And you that's kind of on step number two on page one. Mm -hmm. And to sew it, I'm just going to flip this right sides together. So it goes. Am I good? Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to sew right down here. And you can see that I always want to sew with the side that's flat. I wouldn't want to like flip this over and start with that triangle, because we all know what's going to happen with that little mm -hmm. triangle, right? Thank it's it's going to go yeah. right down into your bobbin case. It's going to merge with your bobbin and never come apart again, right? We have all been there. Okay, so let me just flip that. I'm just going to sew down. I highly recommend that you start with a little like jumper piece of fabric so you don't waste your thread, your needle doesn't become unthreaded or any of that. And I always stop and start with that piece. You could be really efficient if you had two of those, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that looks good, good quarter inch. And by the way, I am sewing with a scant quarter inch on all of these blocks today. And I do saw a scant, unless for some reason I don't, and I'll make a big issue out of it. Don't use a scant quarter. Okay, so I got that side sewn. So now I want to sew this way, but I'm going to turn it all the way around. So again, I have that flat edge on top. And I just line it up. I have, was sitting on this rolly chair this morning, threading the machine, and I almost <laughs> it slipped out from under me. <laughs> Fortunately, no one was in here to watch me blunder. But <laughs> and my tailbone is still intact, so I'm quite pleased about that. But you got to be careful. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. I've been talking to people on the East Coast, <laughs> and they kind of go, "Well, how is it where you are?" I'm kind of like, "I'm in California. <laughs> it's 80 degrees." Okay. 
Yeah, I'm at the beach. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press that open. And I do have steam in my iron. And somebody asked me, um, just this earlier this week, and I said, respect your steam, what I really mean by that. And what I really mean by that is I want to make sure that I'm not steaming my fabric in a different position than I want. I don't want to curve it. I don't want to wonk it. You know, you just got to make sure you're just nice and flat on it. Okay, so I have these two little tips hanging out. So I'm just going to cut those off. So it's nice and even. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some rectangles. And these rectangles are going to go here, and the other one is going to go down here. And it's probably not the most conventional way to make this block, but it works. <laughs> right? So I'm just going to take the rectangle on the right, we'll put this one aside for now, and I'm just going to flip it right sides together, and you can tell at the very top I have a little tip hanging out. And I want to start my seam to where those two fabrics meet. And I have a close-up picture of it down at the bottom of page one. Can you see that? And you're just going to sew. Now if you're a little bit off, not to worry, we're going to be squaring it up, but that's just a guideline of what we want to do. I was watching someone sew at Road to California, they were doing a demo, and instead of using pens, they were using the Wonder Clips. You know those Wonder Clips by um, Clover? Well, it was kind of cumbersome, and heaven forbid if you ran over one. <laughs> we have Wonder Clips in all different colors, as Jill over there knows. Okay, so I got my seam. Can you see I'm pretty close to that edge? Close enough? And I'm just going to open this up, and then I'm going to go back, I'll turn this all the way around, and then flip this right sides together. Pretty easy so far, huh? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> we like easy. Okay. Yep. And you'd always want to check like, when you press your seams one way. Sometimes if they're underneath, you just want to make sure that they don't flip back the other way as they hit the feed dogs. I kind of feel for that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Watch, it's going to be flipped. Nope. See, when I, when I came over here, the seam, I had one seam going up that might flip down. But if you just kind of hold it in place, just be aware of it. And we're going to press this open, okay? We always press away from that center square. We might be able to wonky this up, all right? Okay, so now what I want to do is I just want to cut the brown rectangle so it's even with the blue. So I'm using the blue as a guideline, and I'm just putting the straight edge of my ruler right against there, and just cutting off this excess. Okay, there's one side, turn it around, and there's the other side. And you'll notice, because of the measurement we started with this blue, that right when I do that, I have a really good quarter inch away from that center blue square. Okay? Those you might want to keep. They're big enough for something. <laughs> we can use these. Okay, so that's what we got so far. So the last thing we're going to add is we're going to take this last big square and we're going to cut that diagonally. Okay. And we're just going to sew one on one side and one on the other side. Doesn't get much easier than that. And I'm just going to center to center it so you have equal amount of tips hanging out on both sides. And you might even want to sew it so that you have your seams exposed so you could pay attention since you have a flat surface underneath. That would be a good idea, huh? Yeah. I don't think I put that in your instructions, so you might want to make a note of that. So we do one side, we're going to open it up, and then I'm going to 
add the other side. Okay, get it centered. We turn it over. We really want to make sure as we're sewing along that this quarter inch seam crosses right over that X right there. That's going to give you a really good match on your other side. It's funny, the night before I do these things, I wake up, when I wake up in the morning, I start going through, okay, do I have this ruler? Do I have that ruler? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how I did today, okay? <coughs> all right. So here we go. Everything's sewn on. That's all the fabric we need for the block. I'm going to press that out. And then the really fun part's going to happen. I'm just going to take my six and a half inch fussy cut ruler. And actually, you can use the six and a half inch triangle skirt ruler as well. It's just that this fussy cut ruler is a little bit cleaner with the lines. I'm just going to put it down. Remember, we did that fussy cut right in the middle there. I'm going to meet that X right there. And I'm just going to cut all the way around. And I have this diagonal line going through those seams, and this one is going through those seams. So you do have another reference. Don't you love it? <laughs> Doesn't get much easier. Okay, there we go. That's all there is to that block. Okay. Any questions on that one? It's pretty, huh? We'll put it up on the board. I think that would make a really nice um, repeat pattern in a quilt. You know, if you just, I think that'd be really nice. Okay, the next thing we have is we have a pattern called end of day. And you'll notice at the very top of your pattern, you have two pictures. The one that's on the left that's kind of black and orangey color, that is typically the end of day block, okay? With the two, with the four little corners matching on, on the outside, okay? But you also, same construction, you have the opportunity to put those corners in the middle and this we typically call double pinwheel, but you have a choice. And we're going to be making two blocks at a time, so you might want to make one that way and the other the other way, and that's two more blocks for your quilt. Two for one, right? Okay. So what we're going to do, I did some pre-sewing just to kind of save some time for you guys. Okay, we have two dark strips, a medium strip, and a light strip. And I went ahead and sewed those. This basic scant quarter inch seam allowance should be good. And I'm going to put them right sides together. And I want to lock my seams. Now I press both of them so my seams are pressed towards the dark. Okay. And I place the first one. The first one that I press, or the first one I place, you're going to have this dark strip closest to you. And then the next one is going to go right sides together but this time the dark is going to be on top. The one thing that you're going to know about this block, you just have to be consistent. You can't change your mind like on your marking or anything like that halfway through the block. Or it's, you're going to have half going one way and half the other, which is interesting, but it's not what we're going for today. So anyway, so I got them locked. You can feel it, that it's locked together. I'm going to put them towards me so I can cut without cutting my finger off. And Whatever the measurement is from here to here is what we're going to cut our squares at. And it should be four inches. So knowing that you guys all have an excellent quarter inch seam allowance, I just knew that you guys would be four. So I'm telling you to cut four, four and a half inch, or four, four inch squares. So I just start from the end, doing my fun cutting that Orion likes. And I'm just cutting four of these. You can actually get five out. So if you do make a mistake, you do have some fabric that you can use. So you might want to hold on to that. Oops. Make sure it's cut through. All right. That's a full quarter inch seam now. Hmm? That's a full quarter inch seam that we use to sew the two strips together. The scant. I always use scant, unless I tell you. Yeah, and scant on my machine, if you have a computerized machine, I use 4.0. Okay. Um, 
And then what we're going to do is I'm going to draw one diagonal line on each one of these. I still have them paired together. They're still paired. The seams are still locked. You want to keep them together. And the most important thing to remember is you always want to draw your line from the upper left to the lower right. Okay, so I'm going to do that four times. And I'm going to use, you can use any kind of marking pen. I'm going to use a nice thick one so you can see my marking. Okay, so here we go. And this marking, marking is just going to be used as a guide to where we're going to be putting our stitching. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assembly line sew these. I'm going to sew down one quarter inch from one side, all four of them, and come up and sew going back up, okay? Remember, marking, circle that. Marking is crucial. I speak from a lot of experience on that. Whatever you do, don't answer the phone in the middle of marking. <laughs> you just have to wait. Road was good. Road was busy. My job in the booth was to put the bolts away. And um, that's all I did. I just put the bolts back up in the racks. Good arm and back exercise. And squatting. Oh, it was good squatting, too. <laughs> yeah, it was good. And I'm excited I get to actually, I'm on the faculty for next year. Oh, so I'm, I'm really excited. Well, I th she asked me to submit a lot of things um, about six months ago, and um, I submitted a bunch of things, but I don't know what she selected, and I didn't really know that I was selected until I read the brochure. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really fun because I was I was sitting with Eleanor, we were having dinner, and I'm all, oh my gosh, and she's all, what's wrong? And I said, my name's there. <laughs> Fortunately, her name was right next to mine. So I'm excited. Yeah, it was very busy. Oh, you guys got to go. Oh, fun. Yeah, it was really busy. Yes, Orion's job was to run the register, <laughs> which he enjoyed very quickly running the register, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I got to count his, his work. So anyway, that's how it works. So okay, so I have them sewn on both sides. And now I'm just going to take, I'm going to cut on that drawn line. So I have two. And right now I'm just going to make two piles. You want to make sure that you keep them like pieces together. See how I'm just doing it really methodically here. And four. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we want to place so that our seams are away from us, and this little triangle is going to be to the left. And I believe I have a, a picture that shows you that, just to make sure that you don't get them mixed up. But you notice one's predominantly dark and one's predominantly light, and it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you have the light pieces together. So I'm going to take this over to the ironing mat, and I always want to press my seams open. So with the triangle on the left, Set and pressure seams open. So let me do that. <laughs> See, I'm very carefully using the steam. And you want to make sure you don't get any little pleats right in here. Because, you know, once you iron a pleat in your toast, right? Never gets out. Okay, so those are those ones. So now I'll do these. Hello? It's talking to me. There's no more steam. That's right. It said no more steam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just turned it off, Iko. Yeah. You know, I have one of those cordless Panasonic irons. I love that iron. Yeah, we carry them here. 
you don't have to worry about the cord. You, you just got to remember to put it back in the cradle. But the first one, you try and put it on your mat. Of course, you realize it can't go on your mat. But I think it's a great iron. And it's good for steaming clothes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's just lay it, before we square these up, let's just lay it out so you can get... Here's like the, the double pinwheel layout. Can you see that block? Okay. And then this one's just the mirror image but just predominantly the dark. Okay, so that's that. But this is the other block that I was talking about doing. Okay, so that's the end of day. So see, you have a choice. And I would probably, I'm going to do one, 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 one the other way now. Okay? So let me just, I'm just going to square up one, one set. And you need to have your six inch square up ruler for this. And what we're going to do is I want to make sure, when I put these patches next to each other like this, when I square them up, I want to make sure these still will lock. You know what I mean? I can't square up one down here and one up here. I have to be very consistent. So we're going to keep the little triangle in the upper right-hand corner, and we're going to do our ruler placement so that that is at 1 and 5 eighths. And that's, there's a picture, a close-up picture for you. Do you see that? So I have my 1 and 5 eighths here and 1 and 5 eighths here, all right? And you want to kind of stay as much as you can keeping this diagonal line. You just kind of fiddle with it. It'll, it works. But does that make sense why you want to keep track of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I did just change my blade. Okay, so that's your first cut. And the second one, you're going to be squaring these up to three and a half. And you'll be cutting a little bit more off the outside edge. So there's one. Okay, I'm going to go back to the one and five eighths. If you have some glow line tape, you might want to just put a piece of glow line tape there just to remind you while you're doing it. So it's interesting, I brought um, some of my little miniatures I made out of this pattern to show you today. I'll get them out as soon as I finish this squaring up. I'm getting the block sewn together. We introduced the double pinwheel several years ago and I fell in love with the pattern. I made several of them, made them in two color, made them in multicolor. <laughs> <laughs> you know some patterns you just like really latch on to? I did that with Quick Trip, too. Mm -hmm. I must have made a whole ton of those. Those tips are rebelling on me today. So I bought this map for myself. And I kind of hide it at quilt in a day. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to use it like, like we hide Eleanor's mat. Right. Well, it's not really hidden, but we know where not to go get it from. And, um, but I wanted to make sure I always had a real nice mat. Because, you know, if you have a bad mat, it just really tears up your blades. And if, once your blade's torn up, you push harder on your mat, and then it tears up your mat. So if you can keep them both. Okay, so there's our block. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this right sides together. And what's really exciting, this seam's going to lock, this is going to lock, this is going to lock, and this is going to lock. Just because we pressed it all to the dark in the very beginning. I know. It just feels so good, right? Yeah. Okay, and I don't even cut my threads between the two. I just go right on. Did you see my little rack I pulled out today? It's really nice to keep your rulers all, I mean your, yeah, your rulers all organized. I know what you can get them. <laughs> 
Okay. So I just open it up. You see how what good matches I got? And you want to make sure, like right here, see I have a quarter inch is still for the next seam that's going to be coming. So that looks really good. And I'm just going to flip this like this, and I want the seam on top to be going up, and the seam underneath goes down. That way, as you're sewing, as you're going along, your foot's just going to push that top seam right on into the bottom so you get a really good match there. That's the concept. No, not on this one. Sometimes I think you can over iron your patches while you work on them. Like if you're making a log cabin block, you definitely don't want to iron after every round you put on. Because it distorts every time you do it. By the time you get, because just the way that you have to iron all fours out, it's really hard to keep it straight. I know, it was really hard for me not to iron that one, but I did iron and I realized why you're not supposed to iron. There is a reason for that. Okay, so I have a really good quarter inch that crosses over that X. Let's see, oh, I have one on the other side. This is looking promising, so I might show you the middle. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty good. <laughs> but just the way the seams work, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you'll be a successful. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out these little seams that are in the horizontal seam allowance. It's like two or three. Okay. I'm just going to remove those on both sides. And I kind of, I showed you a picture of it, just what it looks like removed. Mm -hmm. Just to remind you to do that. And the purpose of doing that is because, can you see how these three seams are sewn going this way? And this one's, you want them all to go in a circular motion. Now, depending on your patches, and we're going to get into it later this morning, sometimes they're going to go clockwise, and sometimes they're going to go counterclockwise. But the point is, make sure they're all going in the same direction. So I'm just going to push this open, and you can see, in the midst of all my little red threads, there's a little tiny pin roll right in the middle. I love that. I know. The quilters love it, too, because they don't get this big lump. Okay, so I'm just gently... Just from the top, making sure I don't have pleats, very lightly, and then I'll press it straight down. Okay? So that's that block. Okay, so that one worked, but before I get out of that lesson of that block, when I was first was doing my, you know, I do things in steps, I had these fabrics, and I go, oh my gosh, this doesn't want to work, but... I wanted to bring it in to show you guys so when you're selecting fabric, so you don't have to redo what I redid. So I think Maggie was asking me about redoing blocks. Sometimes the blocks just don't work and you just go back to the fabric. So can you see how there's not much contrast between that green and blue? Mm -hmm. And you know those red glasses or any sort of, you know, that takes the color out? It's like one color. Mm, right. So you got to really watch it, especially on these little blocks that you have more contrast. The little little blocks, the more important contrast. Let me put it next to it. <coughs> next to on the board? No, just take the one from the board and put it right there. Oh, okay. <coughs> Do you see the difference? Yeah, this is kind of is really dense. Yeah. And if you look at the mirror image of it, it's like really dense on the outside. But I just I want to show you that too. Two things. Well, it just looks like there's squares out yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. I know, I tried that too. I said, oh. Yeah. I like it better that way. Yeah, that yeah way it's better. Not as good. Yeah. So. All right. So that's that little lesson. And I'll just show you my little ones real quick. Just to get you inspired. So, here's this one. on it so we can see sides. Yeah, my hands. <laughs> and those of you that know me know I'm kind of switching up my colors a bit. Got the, bright one. <laughs> got the bright one. And if you really want to have fun, That's so cool. you want to go little. Oh, wow. All right. 
So there's a class on this, if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the next one we're going to do? I think it's jackknife? Jackknife, yes. Okay, so jackknife is one of those that you probably looked at and went, oh my gosh, what are we going to do here? But we're going to make it real easy for you. And I start, we're going to start out making the corner patches first. And all we do is we, cut, we start with a background and a dark strip. Again, we're going to sew it together and press it towards the dark. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to take, I use my um, little four and a half inch triangle squat ruler, my new favorite ruler. And I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Okay. We are going to put, I'll get this white piece of fabric so you can see the markings of the ruler. When you look at the one that has all the little tick marks on the side, those little, each individual little tick mark represents an eighth of an inch, okay? And it's because of the slant. It's closer than an eighth, actually, if you just measured it. But we're going to use the one that is at two and seven eighths. So the easiest way to do that is to go down to your three marking and then just go up one tick mark. So when I do this, I'm just going to place it on here. I'm going to have that seven-eighths right at the edge of my fabric. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, this point should match right at the other edge. And for the most part, it will. But once in a while, you're going to get a little flat top. That's totally fine. That's going to be in your seam. What's more important is that is at two and seven-eighths. Okay? So I'm going to cut. I need to cut eight of these, and you just start at one side, and then I'm going to turn around and cut this way. You don't have any fabric lost between there. So let me do that for you, so you can see what I'm talking about. What's my magic number? Two and seven-eighths. And believe me, I try and avoid using anything with eights in them, but this sometimes it is what it is. Okay, so there's one, and then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing again at two and seven-eighths. Matching up this edge with what we just cut, doing that. Okay. And I make two stacks. One's going to have dark on the bottom, and one's going to have light on the bottom. Okay. Remember, two and seven eighths is more important. So, like, this is going to be one I can show you that has like a little flat top. Can you see that little flat? Mm -hmm. So, that's okay. Don't worry about that. I worried at first. Sometimes it's good to know what we need to worry about and what we don't need to worry about, right? That's right. You do the worry and we'll just follow. You just sew. <laughs> we'll follow you. Okay, so I'm just cutting along. I don't know what I'm cutting. Maybe I'm just not applying enough pressure today. Okay, so that's four of those, and this is my last one that I need to do. Okay, so there you go. I have four of each of those. So this can go underneath in the general direction of the trash can. Okay, I'm going to press these flat before I um, go ahead and put them together. They just I wanted to do some pre-sewing so you didn't have to watch me do all the sewing, you know what I mean? Because you want to sew, right? So, this is what we're going to do. We're done with that. And you're just going to take one from each stack like this, and you're just going to sew it together with your quarter inch. We're working on the corner patches of your block. That's a pretty easy way to do it, isn't it? We like easy. And, and since we have four corners, we need to make four of these, right? Lost my foot pedal. I have one of those foot pedals at home that you can, it's like a two foot pedal. It's like think of piano, you know, there's different pedals on the piano. And um, one of them cuts your thread and the other gives you power. 
And if it slips over, all of a sudden I'm going, why do I keep cutting my threads? Because it moved on me. So I got some of that dish, that stuff you put in your cupboards to put your dishes on. Solve that problem. Okay, almost done. So did you guys see the app quilts up at Road to California? They were in the hallway. We were supposed to all make a quilt, something that represents what goes on in our life. So I made a bulldog one. It was fun. It was one of those things, though, you know, you sign up to do it. They ask you to do it like six months ahead of time. You go, oh, sure, I can get that done in like five days before it's due. You're going, what was I thinking? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open these up and press it towards the dark. Go press all of them towards the dark. Yeah. Annie had on her blog a picture of a quilt that was Oprah. One direction, uh, Greece in another direction, another what was it? Jackie O'Keefe and Nasty, yeah. Wow. That was amazing. Wow. It was amazing. Okay, so now I'm going to square this up to two and a half inches. So I'm going back to my fussy cut ruler, and I'm just going to cut all the way around. I'm just using the seam. I'm putting on one of those diagonal lines. That's all you need to do. And you can use this one or... You can also, of course, use a six and a half inch. Okay, just fits right on there. Either one could get to that. I like to use the two, the actual piece of plastic that matches the size when I can, however. Yeah. And this is another good time. You're not going to trim off very much. Just a little. I'll just clean it up. See how nice that looks? Yeah. Much easier than cutting all those trapezoids and sewing them together. Okay, just two more. Then we'll work on our side patches. That's good. It's supposed to be nice here this weekend. Yeah. It's good for the open. Yeah. Okay, so one more. And that takes care of those. As you can tell, I cut off very little. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make these patches right here, these quarter square patches. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with two squares, they're the same size. One's my background and one's my dark. And I'm just going to put those right sides together. And I'm going to draw one diagonal line. And you can use any kind of pin you want. I happen to have a friction in my hand at the moment. You know there's that big thing about the friction pen markings come back out if it freezes. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, well, it never freezes down here, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't, so it's not a concern. But last summer I was up in Montana, and even though it was August, it had a really cold streak. And I had done a bunch of marking, and I thought it was gone. I came up in the morning, and it was all back on. <laughs> so it really does happen. But I just ironed it back out. I think that that's better to use as a permanent marking pen. Because whenever it does disappear on dark, it turns white. Oh, it does? Yes, it does. I did not know that. Well, these markings aren't going to be sh seen from the top of your block anyway. So, right. so we're good on that. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on that 
whatever you're marking you're using pin. <laughs> <laughs> but I typically would use that. This is just closer. Okay, and now I'm going to press my seams so they go towards the dark. Okay, so I have two of them, both towards the dark. And now I'm going to put them right sides together again. And I'm going to lock those seams so you can see how they're locked. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mark from the dark down to the light. Because when I sew, I want to sew so I hit the seam going up first. That way when it comes around to the other side, it's already got something securing the underside. It'll help you not get those flippies going backwards. So just one line. Okay, so I'm going to sew one quarter. My sk skirt must be slippy or something today because I'm about ready to slide off this chair again. That would be fun, huh? But Orion can't put the camera on me like he does his mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I trust him. <laughs> Should I not? Is, was he smiling or not? He's smiling. No, he's pretty nice to me. All right. <laughs> We've been around a long time since he was in high school. Okay, yeah. with really fun hair. Okay, so <coughs> I've sewn on both sides. Now I'm going to cut. Okay, well, I'm going to try and cut. All right, so let's open these up. Remember I was talking about sometimes your seams are going to go in one direction and sometimes the other? Well, if you look at this patch, this seam is sewn going down and this is sewn going up. So in this case, they're all going to go clockwise. So I'm going to push this one this way and this one this way. And typically, if you just have like not any little like diagonal seams in there, it'll just pop open for you. But this one is exact mirror image. So if we look at this, this is going down now, and this is going up. So this one's going to go counterclockwise. And that's OK. It's just as long as they go in the same direction. OK? Pretty easy. Take a little press to them. I press from the top just to make sure I don't get those pleats. If I press from the back, I typically get them. So now I'm going to go back and get my little two and a half inch fussy cut. I use that fussy cut a lot on this quilt. In fact, I just keep it with my supplies for this. Okay, this is really easy to do. I'm just matching up the X of the ruler. Right with those two diagonal seams. You know, I was real cold when I got in here this morning, but those lights sure heat us up, don't they? <laughs> okay, so those are all done. And I, I've already made the other two. And now we can just lay our block out. So let's start in the middle. And then we're going to take these quarter squares that we just made. And we just want to make sure the dark is next to the middle. All right, and then we're just going to place these like this, and this is all there is to this. Is that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Beautiful. So that's it. It looks complicated, but it's really not complicated. Is this the one right behind you, the burgundy and the side one? No. Oh, this one. These pretty much they'll lock because oh. we are pressed to the dark. Okay. Once in a while, there's two of them that don't lock be just because of the swirling thing, but all the rest will lock for you. Okay. Just pin those that don't. Pins are your friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that little block. We're just moving right along. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I want you to cut your fabric before you come. 
Okay. So I think what's next? Does it look and like plenty. peace and plenty? Okay, that's a really fun one. Okay, that one we're going to start out. And the first thing we're going to do with this block is we're going to make these units right here. And there's a way that you, when you sew all these things together, that you can make them, that you can ensure that all these seams will lock. Okay, I was dealing with those other diagonal things with the previous block, so I couldn't get around it, but I can with this one. And what you do is you're going to sew, you're going to take your two squares. I like these two color blocks, they're easy to pick out, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Okay. And in this one, I am going to draw two diagonal lines. And I'm going to do one of those things where you're going to sew one quarter inch down on the left, pivot over in the middle, and sew down again. And then you will turn it down, pivot down. I mean, it's really easy. People just want to keep turning and going this way, but there, there should be a good picture of it. So just make sure you follow that picture. And you have a nifty difty four. Oh, yes, I do have my quarter inch foot, and the edge of my foot's going to go right on that line. No, your this has a quarter inch on both sides. Oh, our new sew straight. No. That's oh, foot. this foot has a quarter inch on both sides. Do you want to show it? Yes, I do want to show it. No. He wanted it to be but his foot. I asked them for about six years to do it, yeah. and they finally did it, which it's a no brainer. But now it has, they finally did it. Mm -hmm. So it has a quarter inch on both sides. Got it. Okay. So can you see what he's talking about? See where this little flange is? Yeah. Where this edge is to the quarter inch as well. Thank you for reminding me that. No, it's, it's not that. I mean, it's okay. We're going to square it up. We've got some leniency going on there. It's okay. Go in. Okay. Okay, so I'm going down. I'm getting to the middle. If you accidentally go over a stitch, do not fret. Okay? You do not have to take it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to go. So I went like a stitch too far. So all I'm going to do is just lift my, get my needle out of there, pick up my presser foot and move it over. I don't care if there's extra stitching on the drawn lines because I'm going to cut on those drawn lines anyway. I did that just to tell you that's okay. Is there a trick to knowing how far to go? It's usually like three stitches okay. if you're sewing with a 2.0 stitch length. Okay. Or you look it up and all of a sudden you're like too far. Yeah, can you, you can see where I just went, oh, I went too far, so I just came back to where I needed to be. Now I'm going to do the other side. Okay. There we go. So can you see how each line has a quarter inch seam away from it. That's what you're looking for. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to cut on both diagonals, just on those drawn lines, and turn them over so the dark's on top. And can you see how they're all going in the same direction now? Okay. So that's good. That's what we wanted to achieve. I'm going to press my seams towards the dark. When I'm done pressing them? Yeah. Just change the battery. Oh. Okay. We can do that. I can entertain you. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you guys have been watching some of the other webinars that I do, but you can find them on Quilt in a Day TV. The miniature class always happens on the second Thursday of the month. 
and that's now from one to four. It's in the afternoon because I was conflicting with the guild and it'll be here. And then I'm doing a modern quilt series um, that's on the second Tuesday of the month. And then this one. And then if you're really interested and want to come into Quilt in the Day, you can do Peppermint Place, which is seen in the classroom. So that's really fun as well. Do them all. Oh. Do them all. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to press these back. Well, I'm really glad I'm doing all of them because that's what I like to do the most is teach. So I'm pressing these back because I'm going to give my lesson. Okay. So can you see how I have, they're all the same, but I just take half my stack. Are we back on? So that goes like that. So I'm getting to the same quarter square triangle patch, but I'm just doing it in two different methods. You might want to turn it around one more time. Okay, so it was it's all, they're all the same, mm -hmm. but then I take half my stack and I'm going to turn it around. Now, uh, right now I'm only making um, two of the patches because I already made the other two, but I thought you'd get the idea from one set instead of two sets. Okay, so when I flip it right sides together, this is really convenient because the seam on top is going to be going up, just what we want. It's going to the dark. We're going to get a good lock there. You have to think a little bit more when you do your patches like this because they're that jaunt. But it does work out quite nicely. I try and group the blocks in like similar lessons. You know what I mean? So this is like two ways to do those. Okay. So now we have two. Let's see how they matched up. That's pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. But that's just the way, because the way that you're introducing the fabric to the presser foot, mm -hmm. and it'll help you out. Okay, we're going to pop them open. Oh, I need my seam ripper. We're going to pop them. This time, so the way we did it, they're all going to twist the same way. It won't be half one way and half the other. But that's good because we're going to sew four together. Okay. Well, it doesn't, it's very fond of each other today. It doesn't want to come apart. Sometimes what happened was, as I, you know, when I did the little jaunt, mm -hmm. those little stitches oh. didn't get cut when I cut on the drawn lines, and so it didn't want to separate. So that's why it was rebelling. So if that happens to you, that's why. Okay, so there's that. And that one's doing the same thing. Aren't you glad I made the other two already? <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> I know. My husband had a meeting last night, so I thought, oh, what can I do? And I said, oh, I know I'm going to do some pre-sewing because it's going to help tomorrow. These baby locks have really good stitches and they just sink right down into that fabric. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm going to go press these and we're going to square them up. Okay, what do you think we're going to square them up to? Two and, a half. Two and a half is our magic number, isn't it? Okay, so I can use my fun little ruler. Actually, it's a template, really, because it doesn't really rule anything, does it? Okay, there's one. Yeah, I think the least amount of markings that you have on your rulers, the better. Yeah. You know, you just got to go, okay, really, what do I need to look at to, st to do whatever task you're doing and find the ruler that doesn't have all these other options to it. Okay. Ooh, this is kind of fun. It's getting really messy. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place these four 
just so you have dark next to light and light next to dark. Okay? And then those get sewn together. And I did the same type of thing with the two bigger squares. Mm -hmm. And when they get pressed open, they're going to get pressed towards the dark, and they're just going to make your corners. Okay, again, we had to do them that same way of doing that little zigzag. So does this make sense? Yeah. All righty. So there you go. That's that block. Okay, well, this is a really fast one for the last one. Okay, so for the last one we're going to do is called Seasons. And this is all you do for Seasons. This is going to be the biggest wrap-up ever, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> all you're going to do is make a gigantic nine patch. Okay, and on this gigantic nine patch, you're going to take your ruler. Ooh, make sure I do the right number. Don't want to mess up now. Yeah. Five and one eighth. Okay, so you're going to take your your six and a half inch square up. Again, we're going to use the eighth inch marks. And I gave you a photograph, and I put the little line that says five and one eighth right on that seam line. Okay, right. that's going to get you centered so that you can keep these equal as much. Okay, so make sure it's marked there and it's marked there, and you square it up, and that's the end of this block. Is that a quick enough wrap up, Ryan? Isn't that fun? I can use this one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, done. Uh, <laughs> All right? That's very cool. So there you go. Okay, so you also have in your packet, you have the instructions um, for your cutting for next time. Okay, so you can go ahead and take care of that. All right, thank you all thank for you coming. Thank, thank you. Enjoy. Yay. Enjoy. Yay.